Here's a beautiful theorem in point set topology, and I first saw this in Moncrease's book, Topology of First Course, as an exercise when I was studying the subject, and I love it so much. It basically states that if A is a countable subset of the plane, then deleting A from the plane results in a path-connected space, which means that if I pick two points at random in the plane that are not in A, there is always going to be a path connecting the points in the plane that entirely avoids A, so long as A is a countable subset of the plane. Now, of course, if A is not countable, if it's uncountable, deleting the y-axis or the x-axis would separate the plane into two disjoint pieces, so it's no longer path connected. You can't join a point on the right of the y-axis to a point on the left of the y-axis by entirely avoiding the y-axis. But in this video, we're going to prove that so long as A is countable, you can connect any two points when you delete A from the plane. And we're going to be very rigorous, okay? This is going to be designed for topology students who want to master rigorous proof writing as well as understanding the intuition. So let's just dive into it and we're going to review the concepts along the way, but I assume some familiarity with countable sets and connectedness. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with two points in the plane, um, P1, Q1, and we're going to take P2, Q2, okay? And these are going to be points that are inside R2 minus A. Okay, so I'm just going to write it out. This is going to be inside R2 minus A, and this is also going to be inside R2 minus A. Okay, so they're not in the, in the countable set A that we are deleted. We're not using the countability yet. We're just saying they're not in A. And we want to connect them by a path that avoids the set A. But we don't really know anything about A, except that it's countable. And what we want to do is somehow find a path. So the proof can't be super constructive because we don't know where A is going to obstruct us. So we have to somehow show the existence of a path. And this is typical of countability proofs, okay? When you, when you have these kinds of set theoretic conditions like countability, showing the existence is the way to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna consider a whole host of possible paths, and we're then going to show one of them works, okay? Without knowing which one exactly. So let's think about possible paths that could connect P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at I'm going to take the straight line path. Okay, that may, that may overlap with A. Okay, we don't know. But we have all these other paths. We can kind of do something like this. We can kind of go something like this. Okay, these are all paths that are going to connect our points P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. And how do we rigorously write it down? I mean, I've sort of said I've drawn it, but how do we rigorously write down the paths? Well, basically, we can look at the midpoint. Okay, what is the midpoint going to be? So this is going to be basic plane geometry. It's going to be equal to P2 minus P1 divided by two, comma Q2 minus Q1 divided by two. Okay, that's going to be the midpoint between our two points, P1, Q1 and P2, Q2. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna look at the parametrized line that is going to be perpendicular to the straight line connecting P1, Q1 and P2, Q2. Um, and we're going to use those points on the line as some kind of leverage for our path. The path's going to hit the line and then go to P2, Q2. So how do we parametrize that line? So again, like if you try to draw a vector, okay, so this is all very precise proof writing, okay? If you try to draw a vector, um, let's say the vector we're going to call, you know, it's a perpendicular vector to um, P2 minus P1, comma Q2 minus Q1. So we can take the vector to be minus Q2 minus Q1, comma P2 minus P1. Okay, that's, that's, that's our vector. And if you think about it, if you dot product with the vector P2 minus P1 comma Q2 minus Q1, you're gonna get zero, okay? So because of that, we can say that this, these two vectors are perpendicular, and this is going to be a vector along the line, so we can use that to parameterize our line. Now, before I get further, what's the idea of considering all these paths? Well, the idea is basically that one of the paths should work, should avoid A, okay? And how we're going to do that very rigorously is we're gonna show that using the countability of A, that if every single path hit A, right, then we would have a function. If you think about this parameterized line, right, every single path hit A, then for every point on the line, we could associate the point on A that the path hits. If you have this point on the line, the path is going to go through that point, okay, we're looking at the path going through that point, and assuming that hits a point of A, it could be anywhere, it could be somewhere here, for example, that would give us a function from this line to A. And the function would be one to one because all these paths are disjoint except at their endpoints which are not in A. So if each path is hitting A, it's hitting A sometime outside of P2, Q2 and P1, Q1. So that would give us a function from the real numbers to A and that would be a contradiction, 
okay? And that would be a contradiction because A is countable and the real numbers aren't countable, okay? So any subset of a countable set is also countable. There's a one-to-one -one function from the real numbers to A, then A has to be countable implies that the image of the real numbers is countable, but that is in bijective correspondence with the real numbers, which is uncountable. So that's a summary, but I just want to briefly explain what the rigorous proof is going to be. And this is going to practice with some more advanced concepts. Okay, so it's going to be well worth watching to understand deeply how to construct these paths. So like I said, you have this vector that is perpendicular to the straight line from P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. So what we can do is we can use that to parametrize the line. Okay, so we can write the parametric form of the line. Okay, so let's call this phi of S. Okay, this is going to be our parametric form of our line. So it's going to be our, you know, our midpoint um, P2 minus, we can write this as P2 minus P1 over 2, comma Q2 minus Q1 over 2. And then you're going to take plus S times our perpendicular vector, okay, that was perpendicular to the straight line from P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. So you could say minus Q2 minus Q1, comma P2 minus P1. Okay, that's going to be our phi S, phi of S. Okay, and let's call this AS comma BS. Okay, AS comma BS. And so as we see, like when S is equal to zero, we're literally getting our midpoint. And then otherwise we're getting a range of possible points on this line. And these are the ASBSs. Okay, so typical ASBS is going to be something here for some value of S. And what we can do now is we've got this parametric form. We're now going to explain what the path is, right? That connects our P1, Q1 to our P2, Q2. How do we explicitly write that down? Okay, and this is going to be practice with, um, it's very important in homotopy theory. It's the idea of concatenating two paths. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to draw the straight line path from P1, Q1 to ASBS, and then the straight line path from ASBS to P2, Q2 and concatenate them. Okay, so the straight line path from one, let's call it um, F of T. Okay, so f of t is going to equal to, and I'll write it as follows, it's going to be 1 minus t times p1, q1, um, plus t times asbs. Okay, so this is important. Okay, so if you look at this, basically what happens here is that, and this is going to be fs of t. Okay, fs of t because for each s there's going to be such a path. Okay, so I'm just going to draw, for a fixed s, I'm drawing my path fs that is going to go from p1, q1 to asbs. And you notice that when fs of 0, f subscript s of 0 is going to equal to p1, q1, because 0 times asbs is 0. And f subscript s of 1 is going to equal to as comma bs. Okay, so I can even write that down. fs of 0 is going to equal to p1, q1, and fs of 1 is going to equal to asbs. Okay, so that's our first one. All right, so we've got our path fs that's going to go from, I'm just going to write it here. Um, this is our path that goes from there to there. And now what about from ASBS to P2Q2? So again, this is good to know. It's the formula for the path connecting two points. So again, it's going to depend on S. Okay, so this is just GS of T. And GS of T is going to equal to, so again, you do the same trick. It's going to be 1 minus T times ASBS. And of course, AS and BS are defined in terms of P1, P2, Q1, Q2, and S. Okay, so I've just abbreviated that. Plus T times P2 comma Q2. And again, you can see that GS of uh, zero is going to equal to AS comma BS. And we know that GS of one is going to equal to P2 comma Q2. Okay, so those are things you want to check. And they're continuous functions. Okay, they're linear functions, so they're continuous. You can check their coordinates. So again, we're being very precise with everything. So we've got our FS and then we've got our GS. And we're just defining what our path is. So if you're writing down a proof, we have to say what these paths are, right? So typically, if you're learning the subject for the first time, it's important to precisely write down the paths. And so, but the idea is kind of there. And we'll also reiterate the idea as we go along. It's an important point about mathematical proofs that once you've got the intuition, you want to write it precisely. But the intuition is the most important important. But when you're starting out, you know, you need to sort of practice with the rigorous writing as well. So we're going to define a function and this is the concatenation of the paths fs and gs. Okay, so it's going to be called hs of t. Sometimes people write it as fs star gs of t. When you study algebraic topology, this becomes important. Okay, it's a it's like a operation on paths. You can connect two paths, you can concatenate two paths if the end point of one is the initial point of the other. It's what's called a groupoid. Okay, so if you know about groups, it's called a groupoid because you can't really multiply any two things, but sometimes you can multiply things. And when you can multiply things, um, you know, there are some nice laws, but we won't get into it in this video. If you have questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. So fs star gs of t, well, this is what it's going to be, is it's going to be fs of 2t um, for zero less than or equal to t less than or equal to half. 
and it's going to be ds of 2t minus 1 um, from half less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1. Okay, now the important point here is that we want to parameterize our path in the interval 0, 1. Okay, we could have simply written something else to parameterize it on interval 0, 2, it doesn't matter, but just to keep everything defined on the interval 0, 1, like fs and gsr, we can write this hs of t because the parameterization matters. And now we observe that fs of, uh, of half or hs of half, if it's a piecewise defined function, it's continuous because fs of 2 times half is going to be fs of 1, and that's going to match with gs of 2 times half minus 1, which is gs of 0. Okay, so basically because the end point of fs is the initial point of gs, they match, you get a continuous function because they match at the end point, this is the gluing lemma in topology. I won't go into that in this video, but that shows hs is continuous and it connects the two points p1, q1 and p2, q2. And now what do we do? So now what's our proof going to be? All right, so proof by contradiction, assume for a contradiction r2 minus a is not path connected and pick two points p1, q1 and p2, q2 um, where there is no path that connects them within R2 minus A, where they are both outside A. Okay, so assume for a contradiction that there exist P1, Q1, P2, Q2 in R2 minus A, and we cannot connect them by a path. Okay, so what does that mean? So as we've done in the picture, we basically write down all these potential paths, which are our HSs, okay? So we understood that to be like this, like this, like this, like all these various options, right? All our HSs. Okay, so because we've assumed for a contradiction you can't connect them by a path, each HS has to, the image of each HS has to hit A. So you can write this as HS of 0, 1, so the image of the open interval 0, 1. We're not considering P1, Q1, and P2, Q2 because they're both outside A anyway. The image of HS of 0, 1, um, intersection A is non-empty, okay? So it's non-empty for each S. So now what we can do is we can pick a point in that intersection, okay? So this is going to be using the axiom of choice, okay? So it's going to use the axiom of choice, but I won't go into details about that, but HS of 0, 1 intersection A is non-empty, so we can pick a point, okay? So pick pick a point, let's say, um, uh, let's call it XS, okay? So pick XS inside HS of 0, 1 um, intersection A. Then we know that, we know S not equal to S prime implies XS not equal to XS prime. That's again because all the HSs of 0, 1s are disjoint. So if you can prove that rigorously, we saw that visually, but it's worth seeing, can you prove that rigorously? That for different SS, the HSs of 0, 1s are disjoint. So therefore, the point we picked XS is not equal to XS prime. So now what we can do is, I'm going to do it here. All right, so now what we can do is we can, knowing that, we can define a function. Okay, so define a function. Um, let's say I've used phi already. So define C from the real numbers to A, um, defined by the rule C of S is going to equal to XS, and so therefore C is going to be one to one. Okay, C is injective because distinct points in the domain are mapped to distinct points in A. And so therefore this is a contradiction. So contradicts the countability of A since R is uncountable. It contradicts the countability of A. I hope it gave you a rigorous foundation, okay, for understanding how to write this kind of math proof as well as visualizing it. Wish you an amazing day. Please leave a like and a subscribe. If you're enjoying my content, it makes a huge difference. And thanks so much to Alex, Nathan, and Chang for their ongoing support on Patreon. If you want to support on Patreon, it makes a huge difference to the channel. Currently do everything on my own and it's a total game cha changer. I offer exclusive perks on Patreon, including a Discord server where we can chat math with me and other members, a personalized thank you message, uh, exclusive updates about my channel, and so much more. You know, I just, I'm extremely grateful to everyone who supports. And also thanks to Enehota and AJR for their support as a YouTube channel member. You could also do that by clicking the join button. Uh, Patreon's preferred, but either way is fine. So thank you so much, and I wish you an amazing day. Now, if you want to see another fun video on my channel, you're going to love this. It's a proof that a product of countable sets, a finite product of countable sets is countable, using prime numbers and number theory. That's really crazy, right? So check it out here, you're gonna love that video. And another video which practices with similar countability arguments is this one, which shows that an increasing function from R to R has to be continuous almost everywhere. Not only does it have to be continuous somewhere, its points of continuity have to be abundant, almost all numbers. That also uses a beautiful argument like this one, you're gonna love that. 